There are a lot of really, really good reasons to come to Madagascar. Um, whether you're into wildlife, whether you're into plants, whether you're into beautiful beaches, mountains, uh, whatever your thing, Madagascar's probably got it. But if you are a baybab lover, and I think anyone who knows me knows that I definitely am, then Madagascar is absolute mecca. And for me, it was on day four that I saw my first Malagasy Baobab, and then day five that I got to that place, which is quite simply heaven on earth for Baobab lovers. It's called the Allée des Baobab, and my goodness, what a place. But let me just wind back. Um, Day four started in Ansirabe, which was a beautiful highland uh, town, strangely on the same altitude and latitude as my home in Zimbabwe, uh, almost exactly the same. And very cool, pleasant climate, and a very, very, very different feel from what I was expecting, because it's got much more of an Asian feel than really than an African feel. The architecture is different, uh, the people different. I mean. The, maybe I've said this already, but the Malagasy language is actually most closely related to Indonesian. Uh, so it's perhaps not that surprising, but yeah, I mean, beautiful, fantastic city. We had, we had a lovely night there. And then we drove uh, through these stunning area of paddy fields and wheat fields and these villages with, like I said, this amazingly different architecture and very Asian feel. And then we started descending through some wide open uh, grasslands and rolling hills and we descended from 1500 meters down almost to sea level and then it started to get a very much more familiar kind of savanna look to it strongly african feel the architecture was more african people look more african and there in the distance just as the sun was coming down was our first ever malagasy Ma <laughs> Malagasy or Madagascan Baobab tree. It was incredible. And we arrived at uh, after dark in the bustling seaside town of Morondava and had a night there. And then the next morning we got up to go and visit the Allée des Baobab. Well, that is the place. It's in every photograph of Madagascar, every story that's ever been printed in the international news about Baobab trees has a picture from Baobab Ali, and sure enough, it was really, really, really worth it. I mean, just the most amazing place. Kind of a spiritual experience for me walking through these trees. The road that goes through the middle of it is just a normal public road. Um, there's people coming and going. There's a little village at one side. It's out in a communal area. So it's very um, kind of authentic and rustic, but these trees are just magnificent. Uh, several different species there. There are six species in total in uh, Madagascar that are endemic, plus the Aransonia digitata that we have in mainland Africa. Um, but in the Ale de Baobab, there's three different species. Uh, the main ones are the Grandidieri uh, and a couple of others. The Grandidieri are the, yeah, the really tall, just, my goodness, utterly, utterly spectacular. So yeah, we stood underneath them, kind of a bit, bit of tree worship, to be honest, um, and fairly unashamed about that. And then we uh, drove up north parallel to the coast um, through just miles and miles of these amazing um, baobab trees going on forever. Sorry, I'm splitting between baobab and baobab. Baobab because that's what I normally say when I'm at home, but baobab because of course in Madagascar that's what everyone calls it, so I'm a bit <laughs> uh, unsure which one to say. And then I'll stick with baobab because that's the Malagasy way. And then we got to this place called Kirindi Forest, and Kirindi Forest is a piece of dryland forest is protected and it's got several lima species that are endemic to that area and we were very hopeful we hadn't yet seen a uh, lima we were very hopeful to see our first lima we were not disappointed on the very same day that we saw the Allée de Baobab in the morning that afternoon we went out for a walk uh, from our little 
biological research station in Kirindi Forest and there we saw our first lemurs and our second ones and our third ones and fourth and fifth and lots more. We went out for another walk that evening and uh, we saw some nocturnal lemurs. Uh, just, I mean, such a diversity. I think we saw four or five different species. Uh, then on the way out the next morning, we saw the Safaka, but not before seeing something that's really rare and unusual. The uh, one, or almost the only significant predator in Madagascar. Madagascar is amazing. There are no hooved animals in Madagascar. There's very limited diversity of uh, different types of uh, sort of mammal families. Um, and, and almost no carnivores, but the one that there is, is a sort of cat-like animal called the fossa. And it's very hard to see, very rare. It eats lemurs, lots of lemurs. And we were incredibly lucky to see one in our camp that actually came into our camp. Uh, then we drove up, we had a fantastic drive through the um, Madagascan countryside. We had two crossings of ferries, very exciting, parking our vehicles side by side uh, on these fairly rickety, um, but you know, very effective and workable ferries uh, across the river, and then across another river, and then we ended up where we are now, which is uh, in a town uh, rather confusingly called Bekopaka. Be Kopika, the Kopika <laughs> pronunciation in Malagasy is quite tough. And this is the entrance to the Parc National Tsingi, the Be Mahal, Be Maha, <laughs> whatever it is. Oh dear, sorry. Mm, sorry, Madagascar, I didn't mean to. Be Mahalara, Mahala. Damn it, I've forgotten it. Uh, but it's, anyway, it's the Tsingi. And Tomorrow we're going to go into the Petit Tsingi and then the day after the Grand Tsingi. I'm not going to tell you any more about that. I'll save that for the next video. All I can say is that this is an utterly extraordinary country full of incredible diversity. And I just feel so privileged to be here. Our self-drive adventure, we're only one week in and we're here for nearly five weeks. So we've got a lot more to see.